Hi there, welcome to my channel Tech Recaps. Today, I'm going to give a brief recap of the technology, what is electricity? Understanding electricity has been crucial for the development of modern technology and has revolutionized various aspects of human life, from lighting and heating to the operation of electronic devices and machinery. Our civilization cannot function without electricity. So, what exactly is electricity and how does it function? To understand electricity, we must go above the molecular level and into the atomic level. Atoms are the smallest things we can view, but not with our eyes, only a scanning tunneling microscope can give us a glimpse of slightly fuzzy spheres. To truly comprehend electricity, we must dive even deeper and peer inside one atom. This is where things become complex because, at the time of writing, the inside of an atom cannot be seen. So we'll utilize this representation of an atom's inside. This is known as the Bohr model, and it should be noted that it is not to scale and is just two-dimensional. This concept, often known as the planetary model, depicts atom components as planets around a sun or moons orbiting a planet. While these circling moons are not in any one position at any given time, they do exist as areas, or clouds, around the core. Regardless of how wrong the Bohr model is, it will suffice for our understanding of electricity. Atoms are made up of protons and neutrons, which comprise the atom's nucleus. The electrons orbit the nucleus. These electrons are responsible for electricity, therefore the name. Consider these orbits to be shells that surround the nucleus. The amount of protons in the nucleus, at the center, determines what type of atom, whose element, it is. Atoms of the same element have the same number of protons, but differ in the number of neutrons and electrons. This varying quantity of electrons is critical to our knowledge. Electrons, which are much lighter than protons in the nucleus, can migrate rather freely. This is significant because electron mobility is what creates an electric current. The positive charge of the nucleus is accounted for by the protons of the atom, and the negative charge is accounted for by the electrons. Within the atom, these charges balance each other out in a stable, resting, or neutral electrical state. This gives the atom a net electric charge of zero, with one negative electron for every positive proton. The atom is at its lowest potential energy level in this condition, which we call the atom's ground state. However, by causing the atom to gain or lose electrons, we may modify its charge or energy level. When there are fewer electrons than protons in an atom, it becomes positively charged. When an atom has more electrons than protons, the net charge reverses and it becomes negatively charged. When an atom has more electrons than protons, it is negatively charged, when it has less electrons than protons, it is positively charged. The electric charge of an atom changes when electrons are lost or gained. For the rest of this movie, we'll color code the atoms as follows, red represents a positive charge, or the absence of electrons. Blue represents a negative charge, or an excess of electrons. A neutral charge, or a balance of electrons and protons, is represented as a purple blend of red and blue. So, when in a ground state or uncharged condition, it appears like this and it's referred to as an atom. When charged, either negatively or positively, it appears like this. When there is a charge, instead of atoms, it is referred to as a negative or positive ion. Each atom's shell can only hold a certain amount of electrons. The inner shell can house two electrons, the second eight, and the third 18, and elements with all seven known shells exist. From the inside out, electrons occupy shells. That is, additional electrons will always seek the innermost shell with a free place. The number of electrons on the atom's outermost shell impacts its reactivity. This shell is known as the valence shell, and the electrons in it are known as valence electrons. When the atom's outermost shell is completely filled, it is generally stable and least reactive. You've probably heard of static electricity and its effects. When you shuffle your feet over a lovely, soft carpet, for example, you build up a positive charge because negatively charged electrons are lost to the carpet. Carpets are frequently created from materials that have insulating characteristics. Insulators do not readily give up electrons, but when electrons from a conductor rub off on them, they can acquire a local charge. These electrons will just sit there until they are taken away by something else. The valence shell of an insulator is already densely packed with electrons. Your body, on the other hand, acts as a conductor. Conductors have loosely bound valence electrons that are quickly moved or lost, in this case from your body to the shuffling area of the carpet. 
Instead of a neutral charge between you and the carpet, a charge imbalance is formed between you and the carpet. When you touch a metal object, such as a doorknob, you are now zapped. Because it is made of metal, the doorknob may be neutrally charged. Metals, with their loosely bound electrons on the outer shells of their atoms, are also conductors. These electrons rush to your body to correct the charge imbalance, giving you a shock. Nature strives for neutral charge equilibrium, or a net charge of zero. Conductors are materials with a high electron mobility. Insulators are materials with poor electron mobility. A simple wire is a commonplace example of an insulator and conductor functioning together. The copper core of this electrical line is surrounded by a plastic casing. The Bohr model shows that copper atoms have a relatively loosely attached electron on the exterior. As a result, copper is a perfect conductor, but plastic is an insulator. This section of wire has millions, if not billions, of copper atoms that easily exchange electrons, allowing us to create an electrical circuit with it. Consider an electrical circuit to be a path that connects two points that may have a charge imbalance, often linking a negatively charged point to a positively charged one. Like marbles in a tube going from a high point to a low point devoid of marbles. Consider these marbles to be electrons, and imagine them all throughout the circuit. These marbles are generated by a power source, such as a battery. In a future video, we'll go over how batteries work in detail. As previously stated, electrons go from the negative to the positive. The battery repels electrons from one end while attracting them from the other. One is pushed out while one is drawn in. Despite the fact that electrons move slowly, this action permits energy to be transmitted almost instantly. To establish such a flow of electrons, we need to provide them with a conductor, such as the copper in our wire. If this path is blocked by an insulator, such as plastic, rubber, or air in the case of a broken wire, the electrons cannot continue to pass, and the electric current is stopped. Making a continuous electrical circuit is essential for the flow of electricity. Connecting a wire between an electron source and an electron attractor. Because all electrical gadgets are supplied in this manner, your battery has two poles, a source and an attractor, negative and positive. This is also why your electrical plug has two tongs, one for entering electrons and one for exiting electrons. This indicates that there will be no resistance to the electron flow. When a short circuit occurs, energy is released for a brief period of time, which is frequently accompanied by the involved wire dangerously heating. This is why fuses are used in buildings and other gadgets, they immediately interrupt the current flow when the current grows too high, preventing damage or, worse, fire. Continue watching my video as we will continue to explore more on newest technology today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share.